All right. Welcome to part three of my carbon fiber boxed upper intake build. I'm just going to kind of show you where I'm at. We've jumped forward slightly. Uh, the lower it has been matched to the phenolic spacer. Uh, the ports are cut in the carbon fiber. And basically what's going to happen is uh, the intake has also been all, it's all been port matched. And so basically what's going to happen is when we bolt it together, we'll sandwich all three layers together in one, in one deal um, with some bolts. And may either epoxy or just use regular sealer uh, to seal it up. Alright, then on the upper, as you can see, we have studs. Uh, they are screw-in studs. And what you'll find is on the inside is made a steel plate. Um, I, don't know, I think it's probably on a sixteenth of an of an inch steel. Nothing, nothing real thick. Made a steel plate. Welded some nuts on there, um, and then just epoxy the plate to the inside of the carbon fiber intake. Yeah, some five minute epoxy or whatnot, and then uh, obviously cut the hole out. Um, and then the studs just screw right in, or you can use bolts. And so when the throttle body's on there, it's just going to sandwich all all those layers together. Also, all right. Then back here in the back, we have some aluminum plate that I have uh, epoxied uh, in with some. Uh, some like JB Weld, uh, something that gets a little harder that's you, know, you can tap or whatnot. Um, this epoxy did in, and then as you can see, I've drilled holes and already went ahead and threaded them for uh, a vacuum line. And what I also did was came in here with some aluminum. Um, 90 degree angled aluminum, really thin stuff, lightweight. Uh, I think I got a piece around here somewhere. Uh, anyway, you can see the thickness there. I mean, it's, it's nothing spectacular. It's, it's, it's pretty thin stuff. I've actually epoxied some of those in along the top. Uh, and what it's going to do, it's going to give the, uh, the intake it gives it some three dimension in here because I'm actually going to carbon fiber back over it again put, put another layer in there and it makes this even more rigid than what it was it just has absolutely no flex to it now this intake's probably going to end up under boost and I just kind of wanted to be double double secure on this deal and I actually did a plate across the back and while I was doing this, I actually had a good idea. Um, I had to brace it along the back, but I also figured if I had to have that back there, I want to do some kind of trick with it. So, as you can see from the inside, you only see one hole that's tapped. And that's going to be for my vacuum line. But there's two holes back here. So the other one is just under this bracket here. And it's epoxied and it's been sealed. As you can see, the edges are sealed. And then it's got this 90 degree here, and then it actually runs down the length of the intake. And you can see I've actually marked it. And you can probably guess what I'm going to do with it. Um, after I uh, put another layer of carbon fiber in there, I'll probably drill these out. And these are strategically placed. Not over the ports. You can see that they're strategically placed right over the ports of the lower. And so what we may end up doing is um, do a little top secret nitrous spray bar. Um, just a little 50 shot or something. And we'll actually jet it outside the intake and then um, hopefully it'll it'll spray um, pretty pretty evenly once these are once these are drilled out just a little intercooler shot 
uh, the car that it's going on will just be a motor car for now. That's the plan at least. It's a 418 cubic inch um, setup. Nothing crazy, super crazy. Just looking for a little motor ride. But thought that uh, we might spray it a little bit um, incognito. Hide the solenoid and just make it look like we got some vacuum lines going in the back. And you know, like I said, it doubles as as strength for the backside too. So this backside has absolutely no flex to it whatsoever. Just like the top and everything else. All right. So and what I'll do is I'll pull these studs out, and it'll go back into our mold. I'll just pop it right back in there, seal everything up just like we had it before. Um, lay the carbon fiber vacuum bag it once again and I've actually went here and you can't really tell but all this has been sanded uh, to expose the fibers so so it should uh, bite very well and it should just be one one continuous piece and once that carbon wraps over these it, it'll it'll even be it'll be more strong than what it is currently with just the epoxy in it I've also been testing some epoxies to see what I'm going to epoxy the, the upper and lower back together with. I think that's what I've decided to do instead of bolting it. I can actually put a nice um, thin bead of epoxy around here and just sandwich the two together while it hardens. And then once it's done, I'll go in here and I can cut this back really close and sand it nice and it'll just be one piece I don't think I'll ever have to take it off the lower uh, the lower and the upper should be able to come off the motor together so that shouldn't be an issue um, so what I've done is I've took some of the pieces that I've cut out here and just did some test patches um, what I've found is that the standard five minute epoxy that you may get in the tubes like this doesn't quite hold very well. It actually pops right off. Um, and this is something that's close to that. This here. Let's see if I can get it to pop. Well, apparently that one works a little better than this one does. But I've also found like the JB Weld type epoxy here. You can see it's gray in color. Holds extremely well. Um, I've actually worked on this piece, getting it off uh, with both hands, and I just don't see the two separating uh, without just breaking the, the fibers up. Alright, we are basically finished with this thing. As you can see, two halves are together. It's actually mounted on the lower. I've threw, threw some fuel rails on there just to kind of see how they mock up. Um, but uh, we uh, it's bonded um, and basically what I did was I just used a two part epoxy and see if we can see in here so you can see the uh, phenolic spacer there bolts the lower down and then you can actually see um, back there on the back side it's where the two part epoxies come out and um, I just reached in there and kind of cleaned it up by hand so you can see with this big 90 millimeter opening, you can reach your hand right in there, get get around to all the edges. Um, and you could probably reach in there and unscrew those bolts that are attaching it to the lower uh, to take the thing off if you needed to. I'm not really sure how easy it would be. I don't see any reason to take it off. Um, and your fuel rails and all that stuff are going to be easy to get, up, get to. All your bolts are going to be easy to get to. And so mounting it and dismounting it from the engine uh, is going to be one simple step. Just take all your bolts out. The whole thing should come off together. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, it's one piece from here on out. Um, got a couple studs in here now. It's just had the throttle body on it. But you can see how the things just screw right into those nuts and bottom out. Just like that. Um, the only thing I really have left to do at this point is 
trim off this excess flange and you can see where I've marked it so now all I've got to do is just trim it off and you can see here where I've, I've marked the line uh, about where I want it and I'm just going to take like an air saw and just trim all that off and probably go over and just clean it up a little bit um, and then um, just a good water sanding the whole thing good water sand you can see it's got well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got really small pinholes up top. I'll probably go back and fill that with an epoxy. May even use like a polyester epoxy, which is mainly just for looks, um, not for strength so much. May use it. I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do, but I'll um, I'll clean it up, sand it, water sand it, fill the pinholes, and then go back and um, probably put a clear coat on it. Just a basic automotive clear coat that go on a car and it should really give it that um, glassy look that uh, that you see on all your carbon fiber stuff alrighty well that's it that's the build thanks for watching um, for any information or to ask questions this build is out also on uh, my form the, the fabforms.com if you have any questions just uh, go on there feel free to ask me questions that are under the carbon fiber section and um, I'll answer them the best I can uh, we've also got a list of all the supplies that I used on our our uh, um, resource page. So you can go to the resource page and um, get the carbon and the epoxy and the vacuum bagging materials and everything that you might need. Um, I'll try to get one last uh, picture on this video of if of it actually on the car working and functioning, uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what the very finished product was. But um, hope you enjoyed.